Well, welcome here to Game State 2024. This is the Big Bang keynote presentation. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of new faces out here in the audience. We have a lot of people tuning in from the audience. So just for the uninitiated, uh, Star Atlas is an ultra high fidelity, grand strategy, space adventure, open world MMO. But we're coupling that with a real world, global, borderless digital economy. So what we believe is that we can deliver both a best-in-class gaming experience, but we can also transform the paradigm of value capture for the players. Star Atlas is not just a game. It presents an opportunity for people all over the world to participate in the formation of a new cyber nation. Uh, the functioning economy is just as important as the game, but a great game is the stimulus for the migration to this new digital world. As you can tell, we'll also be passing out plenty of Kool-Aid over the course of the presentation today. Uh, so the format of the presentation is a little bit of a past, present, and future. Uh, we are going to be taking a look back over the last year, all of the things that we've accomplished. And I have to say, when we started putting this together, I was just absolutely blown away by how much we've done. Um, then we'll be moving into all of the latest in our Unreal Engine development, and just taking a little bit of a look forward at some of the technology that we're using to simplify the onboarding process and make sure that this experience of Star Atlas is accessible to everyone around the world. And so, wait, do you guys hear that? Oh, oh no, this, this sector's not safe, guys. We've got to get out of here. This team seriously makes my job so easy up here. Uh, that's the Pierce X4 uh, getting up to gold standard. You're going to see that in the game soon. But that's, that's actually the level of fidelity that we have across all of the assets in Star Atlas. So, uh, but as I said, we're starting with Rewind. Uh, we don't just talk about shipping things at Star Atlas. We actually ship product. Uh, this last year has been incredible. So just starting in December of 2023, we released 2.1.9 of our showroom client. Now, for those that don't know, Star Atlas is playable right now. This is downloadable on Epic Game Store. Little plug, go to our Discord and get a free game access key. It's playable right now, and this showroom module has a number of experimental modes. You can do hover racing, uh, both in a traditional competitive format or combat racing. We have time trial racing with leaderboards. Uh, our, uh, our flight trainer and dogfighting arena, if you want to get into a little ship first ship battle, as well as our third person shooter gunplay. Uh, just as a rewind, let's, let's take another look at everything that came out with 2.19.
All right, and then in February of this year, we launched the DAC platform. Now, DACs are decentralized autonomous corporations. This is essentially the guild ecosystem of Star Atlas, and we really think guilds are the lifeblood of Star Atlas. Uh, happen to be wearing a Rome shirt this year. <laughs> please, please, guys, no fighting, no fighting amongst the crowd. Um, but no, we have amazing guilds. So when we launched the DAC platform. Uh, this was full on-chain DAC registration. Um, I do actually want to give a special shout out to Afia and Victor in particular here uh, because they're taking all of the on-chain metrics from the guilds and loading that into a flip side dashboard. Uh, some people are on the notorious wall of fame or wall of shame. I think that's very cool. Uh, but ultimately, this is a, a marketing platform. It's designed for you that are running guilds to recruit new members and rise in the ranks. Uh, just taking a quick look at some of the numbers here, we've had 179 DACs formally registered, average size about 20 members, uh, almost 3,000 total members across all DACs. And what's really powerful here, just right down at the bottom, is DAX are holding over $100 million worth of game assets right now. So very, very powerful. In March, uh, speaking of metagravity, we rolled out Surge, uh, which is a faction versus faction versus faction team-based shooter um, and extraction gameplay mechanic. The question here was, how big can we go? How many players can we get into a single instance? Right? And through Metagravity, we have that hyperscale user concurrency. So the test went over a couple of weeks. On the last day, we had 2,100 unique playtesters. And that final test had over 1,000 concurrent players in a single instance. And as Tobin mentioned, this is probably the largest successful test of user concurrency in a uh, shooter gameplay ever. Uh, so ultimately, the idea here is that this helps us get to uh, an open world MMO of global scale. So let's take a little look at how that test looked. <laughs> All right, that one brings back some fond memories. Okay, so we talked December, we talked February, we talked March. April, uh, we rolled out a major update to Sage. Sage is Star Atlas Golden Era. That's our browser-based 2D RTS MMO gameplay. It's where our fully on-chain gaming logic lives. It's also where this vibrant, flourishing economy, which is a key pillar of Star Atlas, uh, currently exists. And so that update was star-based. Starbase saw a transition over to a loyalty point system. Uh, the idea is that players are crafting components. They're contributing those to Starbases within their faction. They're upgrading those Starbases. They're earning Atlas as they do so. We also brought out on-chain progression and early access for people that you know, are playing now to be able to pre-level their account. So XP systems for the account, as well as some of the sub-licenses that players will need to have going into the future. Today it has 1,200 daily active users, about 5,100 unique profiles, a GDP year to date of $15.8 million, and daily average gross earnings of about $15. Now, <laughs> just to put that into perspective, in countries like India and Thailand, the minimum wage is approximately $15 per day. So the point is, the economic opportunity here is very real. In July, Somewhat surprisingly, we uh, <laughs> released our, our DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Uh, big thanks to Eves, actually, if he's out there somewhere. Um, there he is. Uh, <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> 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 
but uh, so, we, so we rolled out four initial PIPs. These PIPs are polis improvement proposals, lay the foundation of decentralized digital government across Star Atlas. Uh, there was a subsequent PIP passed. It was the sponsorship of the Nabathon. That's a hackathon that ended about a week ago. Announce, uh, winners are being announced here today. Uh, that was for six million Atlas, or about $12,000, fully community funded. Uh, we have council elections going on right now. There were 23 candidates that applied for our council. That's been narrowed down to 12, and over the next week, we'll be narrowed down to the final and first five council members of the Star Atlas DAO. Let's go. A bunch of them probably out here as well. One of the really cool metrics is that we, we have an average participation rate of 35%. This might sound kind of like boring governance stuff, but the truth is there's this concept of voter apathy in DAOs. Uh, people don't really care. <laughs> they, they want economic incentives, but they don't really care about contributing to governance. Now, we don't have any economic incentives in voter participation right now, and the fact that we're seeing a third of the total voting power out there contribute, just really demonstrates how passionate our community is about participating in this, this system and this evolution. And then finally, just uh, quickly pointing out too, since inception, we've uh, carved out dedicated revenue streams from the gameplay that funds the DAO. Uh, so this is effectively a collection of taxation off of the GDP. This is important because this allows the DAO to self-perpetuate and our goal, our vision is that Star Atlas can live not five years, 10 years, but potentially hundreds of years, kind of a new America moment, just in a digital universe. Okay, and then in August, just last month, we launched what is probably uh, the, uh, the, the latest and most likely the last major asset class in Star Atlas, and that's crew packs. Now, uh, crew serve a multitude of utility points. These are your in-game avatars. Uh, this is crafting crew in Sage. So the more crew members you have, the more you can produce, the, fa the, the higher your production output. Eventually, these are going to be a part of the uh, mobile application, which is a move to progress fitness app. Naturally, they can serve as your PFP across the Star Atlas ecosystem. And Really proud to announce that we just cleared $1.5 million in revenue from crew packs just over the last month, um, including the pre-sale. This is really important just so you all know we can continue producing revenue and building this game. Uh, but even cooler than that is we have a video here showcasing some of the people that opened these packs and just the excitement that they got from it. Let's go. Whoa! To start us off, a legendary. This is Silver Pack. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god! Uh, we didn't ask permission to for any of those videos, so hopefully we don't have a takedown request there. Um, okay, but we don't always hit all of our goals, but I am very proud to announce, <laughs> very proud to announce that we are launching the Star Atlas mobile app in Q4 2023. And these are the latest mock-ups. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, okay. We're not launching it in Q4, but uh, still very much on the roadmap. It's a product that I still very much care about. We will be uh, giving you some updates on that uh, in the near future. But what's next? What's next? Here's some of the really exciting stuff that's up and coming. Unreal preseason. Now, uh, preseason is effectively a suite of products that we've put together that are designed to capture the hearts of a multitude of different gamers. So a little something for everyone in here. Uh, ultimately, it leads up to our public open launch of Season Zero, which is a story-based campaign starting on the Ooster homeworld of Aoki, and will be the official beta launch uh, of Star Atlas. Now, 
We'll be talking more about that over the course of this year, uh, but the entire build has a major emphasis on multiplayer. multiplayer. So this includes things like competitive and team-based shooter modes like Surge, deep space exploration, social centers at the center, uh, central space stations, combat racing. Uh, you'll be able to strategically command entire fleets. And we have curated economic loops intersecting all of different aspects of the game. And what I do want to emphasize is that all of these are effectively subsystems of the wider MMO. So we're not really building mini games, we're building systems that become what Star Atlas ultimately is. And they're all designed to give every player a chance to go from zero to hero. And so, speaking of, <laughs> uh, we've prepared a cinematic trilogy that follows some of our main heroes, Joni and Mendoza, as they're completing uh, a mission to repair a racer and compete in a Volant Station race. It's going to showcase all of the mechanics that you all have access to as we get to preseason. And I am super, super proud to debut part one of that with you today. No one tells you the secrets of the galaxy. The galaxy provides but you have to find it yourself. I had everything. Wealth, power, purpose, beliefs, all gone. But sometimes to evolve, you need to burn everything down. down. Sometimes you need to learn new things. Hey guys, I got something. It is true though, the galaxy has danger. That comes looking for you when you least expect it. It's hard to know who your friends are. But my father always said, no danger, no deal. He also said that sometimes you need to take what is yours. That you need to make them see the real you. Let them know the truth. before he pulled at the strings of reality. That was before he broke the Star Atlas. I can't wait to see parts two and three. Netflix, uh, we are accepting calls if you're interested in uh, making a show with us. Okay, so uh, getting into the gunplay, why did we want to focus on this? Well, um, as we were out demoing the product, as we were out at events, we saw a major attraction from competitive gamers to get involved in our third-person shooter arenas. And so uh, one of the major advancements that we have coming with that, along with the focus, is for the first time, we'll be introducing consistent multiplayer events at regular, com at regular cadence. Uh, we're going to be adding a number of different game modes that include Surge, which we talked about, Team Deathmatch, Gun Game, amidst a variety of additional game modes. We're adding new maps like Gateway, which is uh, the map being used for the tournament out on the floor today. 
uh, new weapon types, and we're also introducing progression into this. So the ability to uh, level up your character, earn new gear, and also participate in those earnings economic loops. Bringing back a focus on hover racing, this was a big part of our R2.2 plans. It all got rolled now into preseason. And again, this is the uh, both traditional competitive time trial racing, as well as having those combat gameplay racing loops. Um, the big exciting thing here is we want you to get prepared for ship configuration. So the ability to fully customize your vehicle and out strategize your opponents. Um, we're also going to be targeting skill-based betting mechanics added into this. So you're going to be able to compete and earn if you're able to win these races. And then Gallia, uh, this is super exciting. It's really your first opportunity for deep space exploration. It is the open world MMO of Star Atlas. Um, I want to emphasize here that this is a completely seamless universe. So no loading screens, whether you're leaving a star base, uh, or landing on a planet, going through atmosphere. Um, this is really, really hard to do. Um, there's multiple combat systems being added and mission boards. It incorporates our Oni Central Space Station. That's one of the three factions across Star Atlas, uh, which is a mega city and social hub for uh, social behavior as well as uh, commercial activity. And the big release that's up and coming on this is adding land plot selection. So a bunch of you out there probably own land plots on the CSS. You want to be able to go in and pick your specific parcel of land, whether that's next to a beach somewhere or next to a bustling market center. Um, we actually have a great presentation with Brad Warren on our team later to today with a deep dive into Gallia. And I have a video here to showcase all of the features that we have coming up. The fastest way to know if something will work for you is to try it. Learn to proceed without certainty. Life doesn't come with a trial period or a money-back guarantee. There's no GPS for your journey, no step-by-step -step guide to becoming who you're meant to be. Every day, you're writing a story without knowing the ending. You can spend years theorizing, planning, and preparing but until you take that first step, it's all just speculation. As Søren Kierkegaard said, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. You can't wait for certainty to start living, because by the time you're certain, the moment has passed. Certainty is an illusion. Even the surest things in life can change in an instant. Proceed without certainty. Let go of the need to know everything. Rat, listen to me carefully. Go back to Miyoki. Keep the gut safe. Don't trust me. The elders, don't I'll find you. Sir, I did not call you.
space. We dream of transcendence. We dream what we might become. I'm pretty psyched. Also, remind me not to get on the other side of Dominic's sniper rifle, because that was savage. Um, all right, and uh, the final component of preseason is Fleet Command. Now, Fleet Command brings in our fully on-chain game logic and galactic economy from Sage, the 2D game into Unreal Engine 5, and it ultimately becomes the foundation of open world mining, crafting, logistics, and freighting systems in the MMO. Um, to me, one of the coolest components of Fleet Command is that it really showcases and demonstrates uh, how Star Atlas has the ability to go from macro scale to micro scale. So you can choose to manage entire fleets, RTS style, or seamlessly enter the cockpit explore the interior of your ship, and get into thrilling space battles in first-person shooter mode. We have a video for that as well. a cosmos in which we can explore. In which we have agents. We finally get to go into Galactic. Preseason is going to be awesome. We're going to start taking, uh, accepting sign-ups to that soon. I, I want to talk a little bit here just about tech. Again, looking forward to the future. Uh, as I said, Star Atlas has the potential to have a global audience, 8 billion people around the world. There's many different motivations to get involved, which could include uh, the potential to participate in new labor markets. It's really imperative that we simplify the onboarding experience and enable participation at every level across the game. And so this is going to consist of both technology solutions and financial inclusion. Uh, so on the technology side, uh, it, we know not everyone has access to a high-end gaming PC, and we are moving a lot of our content into Unreal Engine 5. So how do we accomplish the goal of making sure it's accessible to everyone? Well, we've been doing a lot of work with various deep-end networks, uh, pixel streaming, and cloud gaming companies 
like Shaga, like Yom, like Aether, to ensure that Star Atlas is streamable to every device all over the world, whether that's mobile uh, or a lower end desktop PC. We're also working on wallet abstraction. It's a sensitive subject for me, but wallet abstraction <laughs> is moving the wallet, wallet setup process back a bit in the user experience. So you can experiment with the game without having to go through the process of setting up a wallet and securing your seed phrase right up front. Uh, and of course, if you do that, you're still going to be able to claim your resources or any income that you've made uh, later if you decide to set up that wallet. I really think that we also have a massive opportunity here uh, to gamify the education process because, you know, we have a really fun gameplay experience here and game missions. And so ultimately, we can encourage self-sovereignty. Other than that, adding easier methods for non-crypto natives to get into the game. And that's through our partnership with Uphold and Topper. We're adding Topper ATMs throughout the game so you can easily cash on-ramp into the game or off-ramp from the game. And finally, uh, we're providing non-economic free-to-play access points to the game with our own dedicated network, AtlasNet, uh, as some of you know it, or Apollo, as we'll refer to it going forward where you can bootstrap an account with a single click to start experimenting with the game. And on the financial inclusion side, I'm extremely excited to announce that we have a fleet rental system rolling out. Uh, this has been in partnership with groups like GG Collective and specifically led up by Forged, as well as a couple of Shadow Loyalty members. You guys may know some of the Sly Labs tools. Uh, so Groove and Anthony have been working on this. And this gives users the ability to easier uh, get into the game easier with a lower cost barrier to entry. And we'll be adding pay over time options to that as well, so you can essentially finance ships and use the earnings from that ship uh, to pay it off over time. On the economic side, we're adding uh, a deeper focus on specialization, some more options for players of all sizes, moving beyond the loyalty point system of Sage today and adding in fixed earning opportunities, uh, more robust peer-to-peer -peer trading opportunities, uh, additional crafting options, and more that I'll be talking about shortly. And we're also going to reduce the transaction count through various passive game modes. Um, these are going to be RNG-enabled RNG or randomness-enabled. Uh, so smaller players can earn higher proportional rewards as they play. And then adding enhancements to our Atlas Locker with uh, benef more benefits like fleet rental, fee discounts, recipe unlocks, discounted crafting fees, and more. We want people that are earning Atlas and saving that in the locker to have even additional benefits. And today, which marks the one year anniversary of the Golden Carnival, maybe some of you don't know that, some of us do remember that with fondness, uh, we used this to kick off Sage one year ago. Uh, you essentially craft golden tickets from the game you, uh, using resources from the game. You'd enter those into a, a weekly raffle, and you'd have a chance to win ships, halves, crew, and more. Well, in celebration of the one-year anniversary, we are doubling down on this. We're going to run it as a promotion for the next four months uh, with over $4 million in rewards going out to players. So I really want to say a huge thank you to the team for all the work that's going into this. A huge thank you to the community here. Uh, I've never been more excited about the future of Star Atlas. We've been through the worst and we're here today. And I can't wait uh, for you all to experience what we have coming in the future. I am going to leave you uh, just with a little teaser of part two of the cinematic. Thank you. Get hyped, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>